Hello, I'm Kayla Chapman, a graduating chemical engineering student at the University of Toledo. And after graduation, I will be working as a process engineer for the J.M. Smucker Company in Oroville, Ohio. So throughout my time here at Toledo, I have been involved in engineering education research. And the purpose of this video is to provide examples of how chemical engineering students reverse engineer YouTube videos by turning the video content into online interactive textbook questions. As engineers are problem solvers in a material and energy balances course, students were assigned the task to create a new problem from a YouTube video. They were given the opportunity to choose any video and from there collaborated with one another to use chemical engineering concepts learned in class to create a feasible real world problem. This video will include two specific examples. Since students could choose any video topic, each created video was unique. Many included real-world processes, but some included fictional settings such as cartoons. The first video that was chosen is a time-lapse video of a fern plant growing and going through photosynthesis over time. The student authors turned this video into a reaction with recycle homework style problem. The second video describes the process of how soft drinks are produced, like the TV show How It's Made. Here, the students took the real-world process and created an energy-related problem around the concept of enthalpy phase changes. These questions were then coded into the Mass and Energy Balances Sidebook as questions called challenge activities. Before going through the student-written problems, we will detail the features of this kind of online homework. First, questions are automatically graded and provide immediate feedback with step-by-step -step solutions. The numbers are rolled with new and randomized content each attempt. Students have an unlimited number of attempts both before getting a question correct the first time as well as after subsequent attempts used for practice. Many question sets have a scaffolding design which means that easier questions precede harder questions and students cannot proceed to level 2 until level 1 is completed successfully. We have three question types, multiple choice which have a finite number of answer choices, single numeric which have an infinite number of answer choices, for just one answer field, and multiple numeric, which is essentially single numeric with two or more answer fields. Numeric answers are graded within a few percent tolerance. At this time, we have over 100 YouTube problems with over 700 problems within the Zybook. Now we will transition to the actual online interactive textbook to show these real examples of the YouTube problems that were reverse engineered into the problem statements. So up first is a problem called fern photosynthesis. Okay, so when students pull up the actual side book, they can click the link to the fern photosynthesis YouTube link and then press start. So as you can see, the actual problem statement is here, which I will read through. Jim has a pet fern. When the fern is healthiest, one plant produces 1.03 millimole of glucose per day. The plant can be modeled as a reactor. The reaction of interest combines carbon dioxide and water to make glucose and oxygen. The feed contains CO2 and water. The single pass conversion of CO2 is 70.8%. Calculate the following unknowns. Extent of reaction, the component molar flow rate of carbon dioxide and of oxygen exiting the reactor. So when the student sees this problem, it's a multiple numeric type problem because there are more than one. Um, and then inside the actual question box, you can see that there's an example. So that's the actual order of magnitude of the real answer and then the same number of significant figures. So as I said, the numbers are rolled. So if I continue to refresh the question, this 1.03 and this 70.8 will continue to change. As you can see here. So then once the student is able to answer the problem, they enter in their answer, which I will just enter in one and hit check. So we got the question wrong, but then, as I said, there was a full step-by-step -step solution and following the process of the 12-step method. So we have our PFD, then the equations and the actual answers that are requested. So once the student figures out what their mistake was and redoes the problem, they can restart and then the numbers will roll again. So once they complete it successfully, they can move to the second problem. So here is a now a 
multiple choice of question. So if we read now the single pass conversion of CO2 decreases by 13%, compared to the original system, will the flow rate of CO2 in the reactor effluent stream decrease, increase, or stay the same? So you can see that you can have the option to choose one or the other. And the numbers that roll here in addition to the two previously is actually the word increase or decrease and the actual percent. So if I continue to refresh, you can see that that's continuing to change. So then if I pick an answer and check it, I actually got it correct, but we have the expected answer and then the uh, quick description of why it's correct. So this is a two level question uh, for the firm photosynthesis. So up next, I will go to the soft drink production. So once again, we're able to click the YouTube link here to the video and then click start. So this problem statement reads, soft drinks can undergo the process of carbon carbonation in an absorption column where the Henry's law determines the carbon dioxide concentration in the exiting liquid. The liquid feed enters the column containing 86.0 mole percent water and the remaining balanced sucrose. A vapor stream containing 6.64 mole per hour of carbon dioxide enters the bottom of the column. The exiting vapor stream leaves with 93.6% of the entering carbon dioxide. The Henry's law constant for carbon dioxide is 1,600 ATM. Stacy is reached when the column is operating at 45.2 degrees Celsius and 1,530 millimeters of mercury. Determine the unknowns. So the mole fraction of carbon dioxide exiting liquid phase, molar mole flow, molar flow rate of exiting liquid, and the component molar flow rate of the exiting water. So here we have a lot more numbers in the problem statement, so actually five of them continuing, continually roll, all but this constant of 1600 ATM. So I will just go through, and you can see that they're continuing to change. So when the student, again, is ready to answer the problem, this is a multiple numeric type problem. We have the example values that are in here. But if I just go through and check, we have our long 12 steps of uh, how to get the answer and with the correct answer. So the student can scroll through and then they can go back and restart the problem. So once they get it correct, we move to level two of this problem. So now we're just asked to calculate the specific enthalpy change of liquid water. So this is a single numeric type question. The student enters in their answer and then check and gives us the actual way on how to get the specific enthalpy change of water. So then once again, once they get it correct, we move to level three. Similar to the last problem, we have a multiple choice. And this is talking about the pressure, the pressure of the absorption Absorber decreases by 39%. Compared to the original system, the liquid mole fraction of carbon dioxide would increase, decrease, increase, or stay the same. So then student chooses. Um, here again, for the rolling numbers, I will show you. Uh, we have all in the problem statement, but that, that constant. And then we have the word decreases or increases, and then that percentage. So if I just choose an answer again and hit check, we have the expected answer and then we have the quick description. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it gives you a better understanding of the importance of reverse engineering and how that's used in a chemical engineering class and then how the students can use those problems as um, homework problems or practice problems to help them better understand the course material. Thank you again.